think maybe what makes my style of recording and audio production special is that at some point we gave up on the realistic documentation of what goes on in a concert hall and pursued the illusion. What I mean by that is the fact that instead of reproducing what an audience on the 10th row in a concert hall would experience, we try to figure out what would be the perspective, the experience that really can't by, be bought by an audience in a traditional surrounding. So we search for, okay, what is the conductor experiencing? Is there any other perspectives close, far away, that can actually convey the emotional intent of the music rather than the realistic happening. That is how we start each and every project. Rather than looking at a given performance in the hall, which we are to capture, then we would rather start with the score and the music, preferably talking and working with the composer, if contemporary, and figuring out, okay, what's the real intention within this score? And I tend to read a score quite differently than how a conductor would prepare. He would go into the full range with both the big lines and big structures and also into the micro details to know exactly what to reproduce. My eye into the score is more about pinching them together, not being too detail focused and rather see, okay, what is the graphical expression of this score? Uh, are there blocks having different movements? Are there contrasts? Who are coming together and who are standing against each other as contrasts? Can I see any colors in this score? Is it a subdued, soft score? Or is it a sharp, sticky, tingling score? I try to get some kind of inspiration literally from reading that score. And based on that, I start rearranging the full orchestra. So the oboes doesn't necessarily sit where they used to. They sit where I find them to be in the music. A key element to me is simplicity. Simplicity in thought. All the way from reading the score, finding a placement for the musicians, choosing microphones, is all about simplicity. On the technical side, it's, it's about keeping your signal path clean and short. As few components as possible, and as straight to the uh, A to D converter as ever possible. Let's have a look at where we're coming from, because we started out with stereo in the 90s. Then we uh, were very early on embracing surround sound. What we found in surround sound that we had not achieved with stereo was much greater musical and sonical resolution than ever before. Obviously, in stereo, you have so much happening, so much information that goes into quite a narrow window. You constantly need to make your choices and your priorities. Do you want this instrument, this musical line to come forward? Okay, then everything else has to move into the background. So you really have to toggle that in stereo. In surround sound, we found that, oh, you can really just lay everything out and let the listener make those priorities because the resolution is all there. What I would very much like to convey is that as engineers, we need to challenge that fear 
of not being able to correct in post. I think we should be more daring and actually make the choice. And the reason why I say this is, is not to be bold per se, but more down to the fact that to be able to make good choices further down the path, you would actually have to make the choice. So you have a result which will actually be the fundamentals of your next choice. And out of that choice, you would have to do another choice. If you leave all, the, all your options hanging in the air, they will be unrelated and they can't accumulate into a final product. So by delaying whether the balance between those two instruments should be like this or like that, you are actually avoiding to make the choice of whether that instrument actually needs to be 10 centimeters closer or further away, or the microphones higher. And, and it's so important uh, to, to what we're doing, because today we have this segregation where we have tracking with no responsibility to what happens afterwards. Then we have mixing process unrelated to that. And then everyone relays on the mastering engineer at the end to fix everything that couldn't be done earlier in the chain. We as recording engineers, we need to dare to make our decisions and stand by them. Not go to the cowardly choice of just spreading as many microphones as possible for someone else to pull the faders in post-production. Make a choice. Where is that microphone going to pick up? How is the balance actually going to turn out? What will be your dimensions and your perspectives of how the musicians are placed according to each other, where they are in the room, how close, how far away. Make the choice. If I should give any advice, it would be to follow your own consciousness. Because if you spend your working career chasing after satisfying everyone else, then you're, you're doomed to make mediocre products for the rest of your life. So figure out what you want to do, think it through, and then start working. Start learning the tools. And that's really, really important. I can't stress that enough. Learn your tools. Then experience, go back and think. You, you, you need to spend quite a lot of time thinking. So if you spend four hours sitting working with some gears, you would actually benefit from another four hour contemplating what you actually achieved in your first time. And constantly reconsidering what are you doing? How does it sound? Are you really achieving what you set out for? What would you have to adjust, make some new tries, and finally you'll get there. One important aspect of music production is the, um, the process of not doing. It's an important aspect of the recording. In the highly efficient world we live in today, Everyone is very, very focused on doing. Uh, that also comes down into uh, music production and uh, engineering. I think one aspect of quality production is to step back and don't do. Just relax and take in. Actually, allow yourself time to experience what is really happening. And I think only then can you make the right choices on how to move forward again. It seems banal, but, but, but it's, it's actually important because everyone is so busy about, oh, I have to do this, do this, perform like this. 
Hey, stop. Listen to what's happening around you. Reflect. And then act. <laughs>